think I'm right in saying that uh, they're doing a remake uh, of a very famous film, one of the best ever of the 80s, Top Gun. Uh, I'd like to introduce the real thing. Hey, man, this is better looking than Tom Cruise, maybe not quite as wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Not certain how many more wives, but there we go. That's another story. But his name is Brian Brewer. And I just call you Brew like everybody else does. Yes, sir. You were a fighter pilot, a Top Gun pilot in the U.S. Navy. Tell us about your experiences. Uh, it, was, it was the biggest life-changing dream you could possibly imagine that actually came true. Um, I'm originally a horseshoer that went to infinite completed college with a degree in geology but in the mid 80s oil plummeted down to six or seven dollars a barrel and figured I needed to find another job so I applied to the Navy to fly off aircraft carriers and and by some act of God they accepted me and and the, the rest of it as they say is history now listen was Top Gun anything like reality there are there are two things that are true from that movie Top Gun and one of them is there is a place called Top Gun, and the other one is they fly jets there. Everything else is pretty much fantasy, and, and, and it was more closer to a Hollywood musical than it was, was the reality of it, but it sure was fun to watch, wasn't I'd, it? I'd like to bet that no matter how ridiculous it was, I bet you've lived a, a few evenings, good evenings off the back of it, right? Oh, no doubt, yeah. no, no doubt. Look back on it and, and I mean, there was hardship and family separation on it, but it was it was truly living a dream and a, and an education beyond any I could imagine. And probably the, the the most rewarding part of all of it was the people that I had the privilege to work with and serve with. And and that goes from the officer corps down to the entry level boot troops that would that would come on board the finest people in the world most diverse crew force you can imagine that come from all gamuts of backgrounds and some of them quite challenging which made them all heroes in my mind to overcome that adversity one thing i possibly will take from the movie that i'd like to to, to suggest to you is that <clears throat> no matter how adversarial one may be in one's private life with some of one's colleagues. The fact is, when the chips are down, when the hammer's down, you work together and you fight together as a unit. And I really want to sort of extrapolate from that some of your thoughts about how we in civilian life, in manufacturing life, can learn from those experiences and what your company, Check Six, which you went on to found, is able to tell us. Well, that's a really good question. I, I think what bound everybody together was a, a, a sense and a purpose greater than ourselves. There was a mission. There was something of higher calling that that benefited more than just being in a really fast airplane and going whee while you're while you're going down the catapult. Um, it it really was a, a calling in which you were devoted and dedicated to accomplish that mission, which. Um, was essentially preservation of life and security for free people all over the world. Now, now, how does that relate to manufacturing? Well, let's look at what manufacturing does, shall we? I mean, you, you look around this exhibit hall here and you, you, you see automation, you see the integration of that automation with humans that at the end of the day provides goods and services that makes this world better. Um, it allows us to do things that we never thought we could do before. It allows us to conquer space and take advantage of that. It'll, it allows for people in third world countries that are, that are challenged at the moment and have been for, for millennia. And, and it's, it's giving them opportunity and, and an opportunity to join a broader race of human beings that, that their core values are in freedom. And, and all of those things that freedom brings, and, and which is opportunity first and foremost. So um, I, I think the two are so similar and, and probably one of the single greatest values that comes out of that is leadership and leadership development of those that created the circumstance we have right now as well as those that are gonna probably improve on that. I'm gonna pick you up on something because while I, I would subscribe as an individual to all you've just described yourselves about the, the, the sense of mission around the, the beauty of 
bringing people together to make things, to change the world, to create a better world. If you're working in a, in a metal bashing shop somewhere in the West Midlands, right? And, and you're the boss of that company, you ain't gonna get that team to work together better by telling them that they're gonna be providing a better life for people in the third world. It doesn't work that way. There's a number of things that motivate people, and, and especially with the younger generation out there, millennials and others, that, that it, at, at one point I kind of scratched my head about, but really, I think they may, may have part of it more right than others, which is they want to be valued. They want to know that there's a sense of purpose behind what they're doing that, that is greater than their own, which kind of goes back to the previous point. And, and I may disagree with you a little bit on... Uh, that message of a greater purpose being outside of Midland, Texas, or, or wherever that shop may be, that that I, I I think given in the right context, they would see that what they're doing is is certainly helping to change the world and improve it. So is that a is that a leader's job to try and put what we do on our daily rotor, if you like, to 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 give it a sense of meaning and purpose, to give it some context. Well, I think that's probably part of it, um, because you know certainly a paycheck has its limitations if that's the only thing you're working for. Now we all obviously need that to to meet our commitments and and provide for our families and so forth. But money alone is is uh, really has never been that much of a motivator for me. So it's kind of hard to and 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 I I appreciate and like broader challenges and I think. Um, most people in the free world do. And, and certainly uh, there, there's a thing in, in manufacturing that entrepreneurial spirit, regardless of how big or small it is, it's, it's constantly innovating to stay competitive and to be creative and to, to do that. And, 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 and that takes an extraordinary individual to do that. And they're driven by lofty and, and extraordinary goals. And, and that's, that's where I find a sense of kinship between the challenging past that, that certainly challenged me because being a horseshoer and a cowboy and growing up and getting to fly fighters off the flight deck of an aircraft carrier daytime, nighttime, and, and survive conflicts that unfortunately we've had to be in is, you know, a dream come true. And I, and I think those same things, or at least the people I interact with, they're motivated by exactly the same thing. Are, are leaders born or are they forged in other ways are they created they absolutely are both <laughs> <laughs> all right i get it <laughs> well, I, I, I think I, I think the real answer to that is is there are some like 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 an athlete like the athletes that come out around the world that are just unbelievable there's there's some that by divine providence are given skill sets the rest of us that skill set can be acquired learned and and the thing that check six or we 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 do here is, is we because we've done it for decades and out of necessity uh, develop leadership skills and those people around us is is that uh, uh, it can be accelerated so uh, I think that's enormously optimistic because I think what it says to the the owner of a, a small manufacturing business who may say come on you know I can't be a, a great leader in the in in the in the Brian Brewer's you know, mold you don't have to be. You can be a great leader in your own environment and you can acquire those skills and you can help the people around you develop in ways they'd never imagined if you have the right training and understanding. There is a return on investment that borderlines on priceless for developing your people. And the leadership skill set you instill in your people does a number of things to solve problems and headaches. It makes life easier to manage. You can empower and maximize what your workforce can do. Because what I will tell you, and this is, this is how I feel and believe, I have seen the potential of humans working in concert with one another when they have a skill set and they're strongly led. And it is, it is orders of magnitude above the status quo today of what people think that we can do. And, and properly led, properly groomed and it's 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 a rounding error of an expense given the return on investment you get out of that 
and and that is what Check Six also brings to the table is that very thing. And and it's a promise because we know we can do it and we do it every single day. Well, I, I find it enormously inspiring because I, I know from personal experience when men, women come together with a, a sense of ordered purpose and are led well, it, it can you can move mountains. So I buy into it big time. Brew, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Um, I, I shan't mention Tom Cruise ever again, I promise. <laughs>